multiplication of mixed numbers. In the previous video, you saw how to model multiplication of mixed numbers using a rectangular array. And we multiplied the problem 3 and 1 half times 4 and 3 fourths. And we drew an extensive little diagram that was built on a rectangular array model in order to show how all the parts made sense. But we typically do not want students having to draw models forever. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same problem, but this time we're going to look at how we can do this problem efficiently, but yet without making the numbers too complicated. So our problem was 3 and 1 half times 4 and 3 fourths. Now then, what I'm going to do is use the distributive property of multiplication over addition, and I'm going to rewrite this problem as 3 plus 1 half, and I'm going to multiply that to the sum of 4 and 3 fourths. Now, if that's what we do, let's look at the fact and remember that we're going to have four partial products emerge from this. The first partial product is 3 times 4, and we know that 3 times 4 is 12. Now the second partial product will come from 3 times 3 fourths. Well, 3 times 3 fourths, that will be 9 fourths. Our next partial product will come from the second add-in in the first factor, that's the half, half times 4. So that's going to give me 4 halves. And the last partial product that we will determine will come from the fractional parts, 1 half times 3 fourths, which when multiplied together gives us 3 eighths. Now, if those numbers look familiar from the previous problem, it's because these are the same amounts that we saw when we did the problem using the rectangular array. Notice, the 12 was found here. It's the whole number times whole number. Then, the 9 fourths. Well, the 9 fourths are over here, written in three various pieces. Notice, it is three pieces of three-fourths for a total of nine-fourths. The four halves is literally a half of four, or if you want to do the multiplication in the other direction, think of it as four times a half. And notice right here, I have four one-halves. The last piece, which is a half of three-fourths, is found over here. If you would think of these red pieces as continuing all the way up through this last box, I cut it in half and kept only the lower piece. And so we see that these four add-ins are illustrated nicely in my rectangular array. And now I just need to be able to do some addition. And the addition that we will do is the same one I did previously. I'm going to determine a common denominator. And this time I'm going to do the problem differently to show you some ways in which we can do additions that may help. So before I simplify, I'm simply going to get a common denominator and say 12 plus. The common denominator is 8, so I'm going to double both the numerator and denominator to have 18 over 8 from this add end plus. The four halves as an add-in will need to be multiplied by numerator and denominator by four. So I have 16 over 8 plus 3 over 8. Now, part of this is nice, and this is what I'm going to show you how I do some additions and this problem, how I think about it to help me out. I know that 8 is my denominator, so I'm trying to make multiples of 8 anywhere in the numerators I can. Notice here, I've already succeeded. But if I look here, 18 is 2 eighths more than it needs to be. So I'm going to cross the 18 out and make this a 16. 
Now I can't just make those two pieces disappear. I come over here and give those two pieces to the three, making it a five. I now know 16 over 8 is 2, so I have 2 and 2 is 4. 4 added on to 12 is 16. So let me write that down. I have 16 holes and I have 5 eighths left over, or actually you could think of it as 5 eighths of the 17th piece or the 17th hole. And this is how I sometimes add 